On the night of August 31st, 2010, which was a Tuesday night, uh, statistically speaking, if you were planning to watch TV that night, you were probably planning to watch a show called NCIS at 8 p.m. that night. If you were not planning on watching NCIS that night, uh, the thing you were next most likely to be planning to watch that night, according to the ratings, uh, was a show called Wipeout. Those shows on CBS and ABC were scheduled for 8 p.m. that Tuesday night on August 31st, 2010. But those shows did not air as planned that night at 8 p.m. Because at 8 p.m. that night, this is what was on TV on all of the networks at the same time. An address to the nation by President Obama announcing the end of something that for a very long time had felt like it was never going to end. Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the end of our combat mission in Iraq. The, ongoing the time difference between Washington, D.C. and Baghdad is eight hours. So when President Obama started speaking in the United States at 8 p.m. on that night, August 31st, it was after midnight in Baghdad. It was already September 1st in Baghdad. And so what is recorded as the end of the U.S. combat mission in Iraq gets listed in the history books as September 2010. It was not the end of everything in Iraq for the United States when we went through that transition, but it was really when what started in 2003 finally started to end. The page was turned. Operation Iraqi Freedom is over, and the Iraqi people now have lead responsibility for the security of their country. When President Obama spoke that night, there were still 50,000 U.S. troops in Iraq. And 50,000 Americans stayed in Iraq after that night for another 14 months until everyone finally left the following December, December 2011. But when the mission changed from a combat mission to the train, advise, assist mission, then it wasn't Operation Iraqi Freedom anymore. It wasn't that same war. It was the way that war came to an end. And that's why it was worth interrupting Wipeout and NCIS that night and all the other 8 p.m. programming. And that's why it was worth, at least for me, I thought it was worth flying out to Baghdad to be there for that historic ending uh, as the combat mission ended. That was what happened on August 31st and September 1st, 2010. And today, that's what the president said is going to happen this spring in Afghanistan, that same transition. In a surprise announcement, the president today announced a newly sped up timetable for how the war is gonna wind down in Afghanistan. Today we agree that as Afghan forces take the lead and as President Karzai announces the final phase of the transition, coalition forces will move to a support role this spring. Our troops will continue to fight alongside Afghans when needed, but let me say it as plainly as I can. Starting this spring, our troops will have a different mission. Training, advising, assisting Afghan forces. It will be a historic moment. It will be a historic moment. Coalition forces will move to a support role this spring. Now, now, like we saw in Iraq, this does not mean that everybody is going to come home immediately this spring. Remember, 50,000 Americans stayed on in Iraq after the announcement in September 2010. And it wasn't like the danger level for those Americans dropped to zero. Just being there was still dangerous. And we did still have some Americans killed and some Americans wounded in that last year of being there after the change in mission. But this is what ending it looks like. President Obama today saying today that it, it will still be a dangerous environment, that we will still need to do force protection. But the mission is going to change. This is how we start to leave. And it's going to happen as of this spring, which is a surprise, which is faster than anybody said it was going to happen. Now, the justification for speeding up the way out, I have to admit, is a little holy. It, uh, holy with an E, not holy as in, oh. Uh, President Obama saying today that what he called the acceleration was made possible in part because of the progress that's been made in terms of Afghan security forces, their capacity to take the lead. Now, I don't really know anything about the strength of Afghan security forces, and neither do you, unless you're just back from the war, in which case, welcome home. Uh, but the Pentagon's report to Congress on that subject which reportedly was ready before the election this year, but did not get released until after the election for some reason. The official U.S. Pentagon report on the readiness of Afghan security forces says, far from Afghan security forces being ready to take the lead, it says that out of 23 Afghan army brigades, 
Only one of those 23 brigades is capable of operating independently without support from international or U.S. troops. This is the graphic in that report that says that. Brilliant graphic, right? This is how the Pentagon presents data that it doesn't really want to make headlines. But I can interpret it for you. You see the 23 that I've circled there? That's the number of brigades. How many of those brigades can operate, see there, independent with advisors? Well, oh, one. One of 23. Even if you're bad at math, you can tell that's not good. The same report, the Pentagon's own report, showed that after the U.S. troop surge in Afghanistan, violence in that country was actually higher than it was before the surge, not lower than it was before the surge. So in what case was the surge a success? So yeah, it is, it is a bit rich that the reason we can afford to speed up the ending of this war is because things have worked out so well in this war. It's a bit rich, right? But you know what? The supposed reason we could leave Iraq was because of the stable, democratic Iraqi government we left behind, right? Success of the surge and all that. Well, the day after we left Iraq, the prime minister of Iraq issued an arrest warrant for the vice president of Iraq the very next day after we left. So that little story we told ourselves on the way out of that war, that was pretty rich, too. But knowing that, do you wish we were still in Iraq? Do you wish we hadn't left? More importantly, even if we do not hit any of the supposed benchmarks that we tell ourselves are relevant for why and when we can leave, peace in the provinces, or the Afghan government getting less corrupt, or the development of trustworthy and capable Afghan security forces, even if we have not met any of those benchmarks, do you believe that the U.S. fighting there longer, the U.S. fighting this war for a 13th year, a 14th year, a 15th year, would get us closer to those benchmarks than 12 years of fighting have gotten us thus far? Will staying longer help? You really believe that? Or do you stay as long as you can and do what you can and then do you go? Today, quietly and without much ceremony, today President Obama announced that we will go sooner than we had been led to believe we could hope for. In a way that felt familiar for a reason. Starting this spring, our troops will have a different mission. Training, advising, assisting Afghan forces. Going forward, a transitional force of U.S. troops will remain in Iraq with a different mission, advising and assisting Iraq's security forces. Afghans will have full responsibility for their security. And the Iraqi people now have lead responsibility for the security of their country. We still face significant challenges. Many challenges remain. But because of this progress, our transition is on track. This completes a transition to Iraqi responsibility for their own security. President Barack Obama is still in his first term as president. He's not been inaugurated for a second term yet, right? President Obama's predecessor started two of the longest wars in U.S. history and never finished them. In this president's first term, he has already ended one of those wars, and he is now ending the second one, and he is doing it in the same way that he ended the first one. It has been a long time coming. For America's military families who are in their 12th straight year now of multiple deployments, years of deployments in support of two wars, two of the longest wars in this country's history that 99% of this country has not fought in, for Afghanistan, for America's military, for America's military families, this is a long time coming. This is a long time coming. This is a very long time coming. 